We're uh, going to be talking today about APRS basics for MCOM. And on Facebook, we start up the Facebook. Hello, everyone joining us from Facebook. Uh, we're going to be talking about APRS for MCOM. And now let me push the Wave Talkers go live. And we should be live on Wave Talkers now as well. So thanks, everyone, for, for joining us today. Um, let me actually uh, pin my colleagues up here to make sure they're all showing up on screen as well. And uh, we'll bring uh, Dan, NR6V, up onto screen, David, uh, W0DHD, and David, KK6DA. There we are. All four of us are, are here. And uh, thanks again for, for joining us today. We're going to be talking about APRS use in MCOM. So this is just the basics of APRS. I would not consider any of the four of us to be necessarily experts, as they would say, in APRS, but we are all users of it. And we're going to go through uh, some of the basics and how, how we use APRS across uh, Los Angeles and Ventura counties, uh, ARIES and ACS groups. So with that, uh, last the last several weeks, we've been running a course for WinLink, and we would like everyone to go ahead and check in via WinLink. So um, I'll go ahead and just switch my screen over in the back, move myself down into the corner. Um, for folks who have been following along with us using the, the WinLink course, if you can go ahead and just pop open a new message uh, in your WinLink and then take that message and use the templates. Once again, under the standard templates, go down to the general forms, my screen's probably nice and small right now because everybody's still pinned. Maybe uh, David will unpin everybody else for me real quick. And uh, use the WinLink check-in form that's there. When you fill out the form for the WinLink check-in, uh, make sure you use the what three words. So we get your GPS, your location information. Uh, send it to all four of us. So that would be our call signs, W68AH, uh, NR6V, uh, W0DHG and KK6DA. And uh, send us a little note down here in the comments section. Uh, it can be brief. Uh, give us a little status update, perhaps what the weather's like, perhaps what uh, uh, any requisition requests that that one may have. We've gotten some really fun, fun ones to be able to read through uh, the previous week. And at the end, we'll do the same generating a map to see where everyone is who is following along with us live. So with that, let's go ahead and jump over. Today we are going to be talking, oops, let me see, I've got to get the right keyboard, the right mouse. There we go. We're talking about APRS basics for MCOM getting started. So this is going to be uh, a quick little run through of just the high level of what APRS is. Now APRS stands for automatic position, uh, automatic packet reporting system. It used to be called originally the automatic position reporting system, but that got changed. Um, and now it's this automatic packet reporting system. So what the heck is that? Well, it's pretty much Twitter and text messaging for ham radio at a very rough kind of high level. Um, that's kind of a, a general way to, to, to think about APRS. And, and what you're doing with APRS is you're sending traffic, little tiny messages, little little short messages. Now these short messages are text and they're usually about 48 characters or less. And I say about because there are some variations and different, uh, uh, different variations that will support a little bit more, but keep your messages extremely short, consider about 48 characters or less. Along with each of these little packets of data, there's also an icon that gets associated with the message. And the icons are, are defined within the message as a two character string. So in Los Angeles, for instance, we use the icons to help us identify hospital statuses. So if we have operators that are deployed out to the various different hospitals, and we make a call out to say, uh, please send in your hospital status report. Those operators can simply change 
the icon field uh, for their for their reporting. So if they put a slash five, that would indicate that their oper their hospital is operating under uh, normal operating conditions. If they add a slash four, it would mean the situation is under control. A slash three would show up as orange and show modified services were available. Slash two would indicate, hey, there's a lot of limited services. There's stuff going on right now. And a slash zero would be black, no services, bad stuff is happening, uh, divert all uh, incoming patients to, to other hospitals. So it's a way that you can very quickly and easily send a very quick status update that can convey a lot of information. And all of this can be mapped. So let's talk about a couple of the uses for APRS, not just what it is. Oh, one more thing before I go to that. The other key feature of APRS is that the sender gets to set the guidelines or the path for the distribution of the packet that you're sending. And think of this as a wrapper. We're gonna come back to that in, in just, a, just a minute or so. But, but this is actually a really key thing because it allows you to set how broadly you want your message to be sent out. So a couple of the common uses for APRS. We just talked about the status reports, and that's really common, very easy to be able to, to do. And if you're receiving the APRS packets in, in a computer with a mapping program built in, which we're going to show you in a little while, then all of the hospital's location with the operators, with the status reports, all show up immediately on the screen. It's very easy to see directly on the map. Another use of APRS and MCOM is transmitting of location information. Now in Ventura County, uh, we have the Ventura ACS and ARES, which is the, it's a combo group of our RACES and uh, ARES teams. And when we support uh, different uh, events in the county, such as marathon. So this image was from the uh, Mountains to Sea Marathon, which runs from Ojai, California down to the beach in Ventura, California. And the, the course runs down through this deep ravine. So at all of the aid stations, we had operators set up that had APRS stations running at them. And then we have uh, a few operators that will go at different, they'll ride their bikes, they'll be uh, uh, bicycle mobile. And they'll usually have an HT. Um, in this case, um, this operator was using um, a Kenwood D72. Uh, and that was connected to the antenna that he's got on his back. And he was sending out APRS packets. So with this, the race committee at both the start and at the end and all of the different aid stations can know exactly where the different points in the field of runners are located along the course. Uh, if all of your aid stations also have APRS running, then all your aid stations get uh, mapped out points on them as well. So it's a really handy, handy thing to be able to use. Again, in, in Los Angeles, we're using the location data to identify the locations of the different hospitals and the status, or if there's a, a big deployment where many operators are out, um, it would be very easy to identify where your operators, where all of your different resources are at uh, based on the APRS signals that are out there. Another common thing is to transmit weather information. And weather information can be as simple as a weather station at your location, or perhaps uh, uh, the National Weather Service may put out uh, APRS beacons and, and other hams may put out APRS beacons that have uh, weather information attached to them. And another use is typically messages, very simple messages. We like to use the send pizza message out as a requisition request, but this is that 48 characters uh, of a message that you, you have. So think of a really, really short tweet. All right, so how does this work? So you have your status and let's say you're driving along and you're monitoring the national APRS frequency here in the United States, and that is 144.390 megahertz. And we're going to talk about the use of the national frequency of this 144.390 megahertz, both as a general use, and then we'll transition to more localized use uh, on, on individual simplex frequencies 
uh, in a little while. But you're driving along, you've got your your APRS beaconing out, and you're driving in a caravan. You happen to be driving with with W zero DHG. He's in his own vehicle driving along there. And you set your path, and this is part of the setup. We'll talk a little bit more in more detail about this, but you can set your path to say, hey, I only want W0DHG-4 to have to pay attention to my packets. So if you have your path set to this and he is within simplex range, his radio or his system would, if it picks up the packet, it will pay attention to it. It might throw up a notification on his red radio. It may send him a, a notification in the software that he's using or, or so forth, but he would get the packet. Anyone else who's in simplex range of you would also hear the packet, but they wouldn't necessarily be paying attention to the packet. They may not get a notification that the packet came in. Their radio may simply just filter it out because the path was set to some very specific operator for it to be able to go to. Now, if you recall when we were looking at sound modem, and we'll do this again in, in just a few minutes, but when you were looking at your sound modem waterfall, you can see all of the traffic that's going by. So you would be able to see that traffic, but you wouldn't necessarily get a notification if the path is set to this. So how would you, how would you do that? You could set your path to something called wide one dash zero and then any station who is running APRS on the same frequency that 144.390 who heard that packet it would send a notification to them through their radio or through whatever means they're running APRS with and you can see that as this little tiny wrapper it's a little hard to see but it's it's wrapped in it's wrapped in yellow now if one of the stations happens to be a digipeter and you change your path to be wide 1-1, then that digipeter will receive that message. It'll receive the message. It will then change the wrapper. It'll change the outside. It'll change the path that's on that from the 1-1 to be 1-0, and it'll send that packet out. That 1.0 will hit the end of the line or hit any stations that receive it, and they will, they will get the message to be able to, to see that traffic. Likewise, if you happen to send out with your path, initially written as wide 1-1 comma wide 2-1, and your packet is received by yet another digipeter. Here it's digipeter, the, uh, the one is listed in blue. The blue digipeter, this second one, would once again change the packet. It would change the wrapper, not the, not the message, but it would change the wrapper around it, and it would send that, that packet on. What do you think would happen if you changed it to 2-2? Well, if it was picked up by another digipeter, once again, that message would get forwarded, essentially, on to anyone who can hear it. Now, this is really critical because it allows you to control how broad of an area your packets are going out. So if you're just working within a small localized area, then you may want to keep your, your path set to one of these lower paths that's not going to send your packet out quite as far. Many people ask how many of these wides you can add. Um, I believe the number is around 10, but I would have to go back and look that up. Uh, to, to verify that that's how that worked. So if we go back and we look at the packet itself just a little bit and why those blinked off, I'm not sure, but I will figure that out in a little while. If we go back and we look at the packet, from the time you send the packet out of your station, it initially is the wide 1-1 comma wide 2-2. When it gets to the next level out, that next digipeter has stripped off the wide 2-2 and it's replaced it with wide 2-1. It's decremented that, um, that, that packet path. Likewise, if it gets out to the next one, it's gonna strip the wide 2-1 off and only send it as a wide 1-1. And then finally, it would strip the wide 1-1 off and it would go out as a wide 1-0. I know, super complicated, but it'll all make sense as we get into the demo here in just a second. 
All right, so what do you need to send a PRS? Well, you need a radio uh, at, as kind of the, the very least. You need a radio and you need a TNC. Now that TNC may be built into your radio. It may be an external TNC and it needs to support the AX.25 protocol. Now, if you think back to the Windlink class, suddenly you'll remember AX.25 protocol, that sounds familiar. That's what sound modem was doing for us. And yes, we're going to be revisiting the whole idea of sound modem here in just a few minutes. Now, not every radio has a built-in TNC. Some of the common ones are the mobile radios from Yesu, some of the, the higher-end ones. It's the FT4, what's the, what's the one, David? Uh, FTM 400. FTM 400, the <clears throat> Kenwood uh, D710G. Um, that's the radio that that I use have have those built in. There are some HTs that have a built in TNC can with D74, um, the the newer Yesu, the the FTM 5M, I think it's called. I can't remember the name of that one off the top of my head. I don't have that one. Um, anyway, so you need the TNC or you're going to have an external one. You're also, it's a good idea to have GPS. Now, some radios, again, have a GPS built in. They'll automatically send those signals out. Um, however, not everyone does. So you may need an external G, uh, GPS uh, chip. It can be done as a simple USB chip. Um, but that's kind of the minimum to be able to send. That's if you're a normal, normal ham just out there sending a PRS package. You can do all of this directly from your radio. However, with an MCOM setup, more than likely, you're going to be using a, sim a system very similar to what we just looked at for our WinLink setup. You've got your radio, you've got your signal link, it's connected to your computer via USB port, that signal's going in through your sound control panel, it's then connecting over to sound modem by UZ7HO, which is acting as your virtual TNC. And instead of connecting sound modem to WinLink, like we just did in the last class, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna connect that to an application called Pinpoint APRS. I've also got drawn on here that GPS dongle, uh, which can be a little USB dongle that you can plug in. And that would also send its position information into Pinpoint APRS. There are lots of other different applications that you're able to use. This is the one that we happen to use here in Los Angeles and, and that we're going to, to demo for the class. So this should all, this part should sound fairly familiar if you've just watched through uh, the rest of the WinLink course that we just did. If not, go ahead and check that out. That's posted live up on Wave Talkers to go back into. So let's look at a demo of some of this. So let me change, minimize, bring back up there and we'll cut over to here. So Pinpoint APRS, you get that from pinpointaprs.com. It's a really original URL, but there you go, pinpointaprs.com. And you can just do a straight Google search for that and it should show up for you. You can download the... Uh, the installer right from here. It installs like pretty much any other application uh, on your PC. Uh, Pinpoint APRS is only available for Windows, I believe. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, there are other options that are available for other platforms, uh, but this is the one that we're using here on Windows because it falls along with the same system that we've got. So after you get it installed, here's my WinLink message. I'll go ahead and minimize that. Minimize WinLink out of the way. You'll want to get your sound modem up and running. And we covered all of the details as to how to configure sound modem. There's absolutely no changes that you need to make. So if you've already stepped through our last course and you configured sound modem to work with WinLink, you're all set with that. Your system is all ready to go. You would want to tune your radio to 144.390. And remember, we talked about using that frequency as a frequency to be able to check and make sure that your sound modem is working properly. Because as you can see, there is traffic that is coming in on this frequency pretty much no matter where you're at. Um, if you're, uh, you, you should have your, your antenna set up, so you should be able to pick up some kind of APRS uh, data that should be floating around there. So pinpoint APRS, I'll go ahead and double click that. The icon looks like this little globe with a magnifying glass in it. 
that open. And my version of pinpoint is current. That's great. A couple of windows open up here. Um, most notably, there is a map right here. And if it doesn't have your position already plugged in, if it doesn't have your GPS kind of seeing it uh, ready to go, you can right click on, or I'm sorry, shift click on the shift, uh, shoot, what's the keyboard command? It's not right click. Shift. Chris, I was, here. Yeah, go there you go. I was looking away. You're trying to do what? What's the, the keyboard command for, for changing your location manually? Oh, I've got the GPS plugged in, so it's, it should work anyway yeah. for mine. Right. Yeah. So what you do once you come in here, um, you're going to come up here to the tools menu, and you're going to come down to options. And there's a bunch of information here that we're going to need to configure. Now, initially, you'll want to enter in your call sign plus an SSID. I've got my call sign in here. Uh, you can use... Uh, I typically use slash uh, dash four for my, uh, that's why the right click wasn't working, I had the wrong keyboard on, uh, dash four, which is the same as our, our regular station that we had set up for, for WinLink. Here's that APRS path thing. So right now there's a couple of default options here. There's wide one dash one. And if we remember from the diagram, that's going to let anybody who hears your message to be able to display it. And if it hits a digipeter, it's gonna go one more hop on there. Here's the wide 2-1, 1-1 and wide 2-2, two, uh, two, sorry, wide 2-2, wide 1-1. If I wanted to put in David, W0DHG from that first example, if I wanted to put him in the path here, I would just simply delete what is there and add that in, W0. DHG dash four, because I know that's what his uh, setup is using. So now for driving down the driving down the road, I'm not using this on my laptop or it's you know being operated by someone else in the vehicle. Um, then this traffic would basically be being focused just between the two of us. More than likely, though, for your normal station, you're going to be running in either one dash one. 2-1 or 1-1, 2-2, depending on what your needs are. I'm going to select the 2-2 just because I want to make sure that my packets can get far enough out. Position comment. You can add a small comment here. Oftentimes in an MCOM setup, you would be putting in your tactical call sign here. So for instance, if I was operating out of uh, um, the EOC, I would enter in EOC here in my position comment. If I was operating out of the um, one of the hospitals and put the hospital name, what have you. So I'm actually going to change this to demo so that my position comment goes out as demo. Here's your station icon. Now, station icons, you can either click through these one by one to choose one that you would like to use. Um, and there's tons of these. You can do a quick Google search and find a listing of all the different APRS icons that are out there. Um, or you can come in here and you can simply type in. So slash lowercase y gives you your little ham shack with an HF antenna on top. If you type in slash five and then you hit either the tab or the, I'm sorry, you hit the enter key on your keyboard it will change your icon automatically for you and show you the status icon of five right there. Likewise, we could change this to maybe a status of slash four, hit the enter return key and it changes that icon for me. So that is what you need to set up here in the top on the APRS tab. We'll skip the Digipeter for right now. We'll come down here to the APRS position beacon settings. Now, if you are doing this in an MCOM situation where you're stationed at a hospital, you don't wanna keep pushing traffic out over the network. So an easy way to deal with that is to simply set your beacon to beacon automatically every 555 minutes. More than likely, you're not gonna be moving. My house doesn't move very often, so I don't need to, to beacon out on a very regular basis. We can tell APRS when we want to beacon. We'll show you that in just a second. Unless so, there's an earthquake? 
unless it's an earthquake, you may need to, you, it, it may move at that point. Or let's say you're uh, where we showed the example of, of somebody riding along uh, with a marathon, right. uh, that would be set. And these all can be set inside of your radios as well. Um, that may be set to a faster beaconing mode. So maybe every two minutes or every three minutes because you're riding along with the course and you wanna make sure that that position beacon is, is updated automatically. So you don't have to think about it. So for normal MCOM use though, probably 555. All of that is set in here. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And it doesn't look like really anything has changed. I'm not getting any data in here. And that's because you have to tell Pinpoint APRS to connect to your TNC. So we'll do that next. We'll come back up here to tools. And I'm going to say connect TNC. And if the demo gods are with us, within a short amount of time, we should start seeing, I'll just move this out of the way, we should start seeing some packets coming in down here. There's some, pack, there's some data coming in. So we've got some people that are pushing some APRS packets in here. I'll move this down just a little bit more so we can kind of see that that's going on. And now I'll go ahead and just back, I'll zoom out a little bit and we'll see where we're getting. There's a couple of pins that are showing up here on the map. And it looks like NR6V slash dash four has beaconed out with a status of five so we know he's in uh normal operation mode right now chris see if you see me if you don't i'll do a beacon and we can see how it appears on the map all right um i currently am not seeing you so go ahead and send a beacon out i might be just a little no you you would see me there okay so let's do a beacon from kk60a sending a position beacon now And it may take a few seconds. I'm a little bit further away. So David is somewhere over in this uh, area. He, he just popped up on right oh, on the there right edge of your screen. Yeah. There he is right here. So there's KK68. Let me stretch this window out just a little bit more yep. so we can see that that beacon. So now everyone, if, I... if, if we were beaconing hospital status, these would be two hospitals that are 100% go in operation. If we wanted to change the color, let's say to red, that would give us an indication that something's wrong at the hospital, just visually on the map. Don't even have to look anything else up. So I'm way out here in Ventura County. And if you know anything about the area, there's these are the Santa Monica Mountains that are down here. And there's, there's more mountains that are back over here. There's mountains down in here. So I have all kind of mountains and stuff in the way where I do not have a clean line of sight, but I can see Dan just changed his status to level two. So he's got some things going on right now. We're able to, to see that information visually on the map. Now I am outside of RF range from these guys completely. However, if I come up here and I go to tools and I go down here to send position beacon, which is also F1 is a quick way to be able to send that. Um, let me check real quick. Let me just go back. I'm going to go to options and verify my system. My level is set to four right now. I'll say, okay. And let's move this back up and zoom back out a little bit. Let's go out one more level, go down to tools, go to send position beacon. And there you are. And there I am. So I've shown up on my map with my position beacon. Uh, David and Dan, are you able to see me? Yep. Awesome. Yep. Loud and clear. So, so what's happening here is my beacon is going out and it's being picked up by some station that is acting as a digipeter. And then they are repeating my signal out, transferring it a little bit further down the line. And you're able to it, it continues out until all these folks are able to see that. Now, if you guys want to play along at home, you can, of course, go ahead and open up your web browser and you can go to aprs.fi. And if the demo gods are with me, well, look, it's zoomed right in on, on this is a live view right now. These are all the other APRS uh, stations. You can see there's a lot of weather stations here. 
And if I zoom out on the map just a little bit, if you move down to the Los Angeles, uh, California area, you can see I am the yellow number four. That's right there. Looks like here's Dan, NR6V. Here's the, the red signal for him. And if we come a little bit further over, here's the red or the green one for David, KK68. Now you can see there is a lot of other traffic that's going on here. And so in a, in a regular emergency, you would not want to be using the national frequencies um, more than likely because there's just going to be a ton of other traffic. There's going to be a ton of other information Chris, that's, that's hold, on this map. Hold on my identifier. I just want to point something out that uh, that I have done. There is a place which is discretionary on the way you ID uh, your station, KK6-4, and I believe it's just the position. And so I put in my what three words position. Oh, yeah, right Fact, there. bring birds. It's just another level of information that you can transmit with a very short packet transmission. Very, very nice. So that's kind of a very high level of the way some of this works. Now, what else are we able to do with MCOM? And you can say, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of stations here in, in we Southern California. We have a lot California. of weather, weather stations. There's a lot Angeles, of weather stations. We? And there are some filtering things. You can filter some of that stuff out here in the APRS.FI uh, webpage. Um, but if you can see here, we do not have a huge number of stations that are showing up initially. Now, over time, there will be more and more stations that'll show up here. Let's look at a couple of the other windows that we have available with some of the other information that we have available to us here inside of Pinpoint APRS. Another one of the windows, if you go up to the view menu, is this last heard window. And what last heard is, is this window right here. And there's some additional information that shows up over here on the side. So. There's radio reports, there's APRS.IS. That means if your station is connected to the internet, you can click on click on tools and you can connect to APRS.IS or dash IS. And then you'll get the same information inside of your pinpoint APRS that we were just seeing inside of the APRS.FI website. So it becomes, if you've got access to the internet, this becomes a really handy way to be able to capture everything all in one screen. I don't want as all of that information in for this demo, so I'm gonna leave mine turned off for right now. But if we look here at the radio reports, if we click this open, you can see that position reports, there are 28 position reports that I've received. There's some miscellaneous reports and some weather reports. I'll go ahead and click this one open. And if I scroll down, we can see there's my W6AH, there's my report. And if I click the little plus on it, I've got my Latin lawn, my grid square. This is the data that was transmitted as part of my packet. You can see there's that text that I sent along with it, demo, the timestamp information. We'll come down a little bit further. Here's Dan, NR6V-4, all of his information. He's, transfer he's transmitting his altitude information, his lat and lawn, his grid square, and so forth. His text message, his station message says home QTH. Come down a little bit further. Here's David, KK6DA, and his message. And there's his status. So he set his what three words to colon slash 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 fact bring birds. So that's how those work. Now let me come back up here and let's close the position reports out of the way. Let's say you wanted to see some weather reports. You can go ahead and click that open. These are the stations that I've picked up in the area with what their weather is. And if we click on those, you can see there's some basic weather information that's being transmitted via this APRS. It's all right here, ready to go for you. There's some miscellaneous reports. These are from a couple of different operators. We'll go ahead and click on some of those. We can see this is the Simi Valley Flyers. Close it back up. And if we had the APRS-IS open, we would see reports in here. Messages. Now I've got one message in my inbox right oh, now. Oh, it looks like that? KK6DA has sent me a message via oh, no. APRS. So if I click the little plus here, I get the information that's in the message. And it's this message, I really, really need pizza. We're so back to that, aren't we? We're back to that. Apparently we can't get away from that. So let me send... <laughs> 
a message via APRS back to KK6DA. And remember, I'm way outside of radio range for him. So he's way down here in Los Angeles. He's still running a uh, status of five, which is good. So let me send him a pizza. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hover right on the map and move my mouse right over it, click on his icon on the map, and then just come down here to send message. It's going to bring open a little message window for me. And it's going to automatically address that. It's going to be from my call sign to his call sign. It's going to tell me how many characters I have remaining in this message. Remember I said about 48. Well, this one says I can send 67. Um, it's going to send this message via RF. I could also choose to send it via APRS-IS, and then it would go through my internet connection and do, do the hopping for that. But right now I've got an RF connection, so I'm going to send it through here. So I'm going to just send him a pizza. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. And I'll click, send. I'm going to listen because I've got my radio on. I can hear, I'm listening for a little bit of quiet and I'll hit send. That's you. And now I should have here in my messages and my last heard, I've got sent items and I can see here's the message that I just sent, I sent a pizza. And if I look up here in my inbox, I've got actual new messages coming in from KK6DA and his station automatically acknowledged receipt of that message. Now we'll show you where to, to set up the automatic acknowledgement. There's also uh, here, oh, he's also acknowledged it twice. Now that's a really interesting thing. He only acknowledged one time, but I got two acknowledgements from him. If you think back to that chart with all of the different digipeters and the different stages and how each one, when it gets to a new level, it will send that message out. Well, here in Los Angeles area, there are a lot of digipeters out there. So the chances are pretty good that his message, when he was sending it back to me, got picked up by a digipeter, sent back out, and one path was going forward. Let's look at this one here. The path is APIN20. This is through AJ7C-12. It then went to K6ERN as a wide two message. This other confirmation came from N6LXX-10. It went wide one to Camarillo, which is the Camarillo digipeter here. That's the EOC in Camarillo, California. And that one was digipeted back up to me as well. So the message took multiple paths to get to me, and I was able to receive that message while it was here. Chris, quick question. Yeah. In, the, in the first one, we all know AJ7C. He runs a huge hybrid gateway. Did he receive that packet first, and I, then it went to K6ERN? I believe that's how that went. Wow. I, I could be I could be wrong. Who is I'm, closer to you? I'm I'm be, uh, AJ7C. I'm beaming straight north. Ah, more than likely, I believe that's how that means. But perhaps one of you guys could look that up and, yep. and verify. Okay, this is where I say we're not experts at this. Uh, we're we're users, and so we're we're kind of giving you the the high level of as to how we how we all work with this. So there's that message. I see Dan also sent me a message. I'm click down here on Dan's message. Let's see what Dan sent. Maybe he has pizza. He's a situation critical oh. pizza running low. Oh, no. um, now I can see the message here. I can see it also over here if I click on it. No, I do not see the message appear on the map. It only appears over here on the side. Now on my on my Kenwood D710G. Right now, I have that connected through my signal link connected into the computer. But if I had my Kenwood set up so that it was just in the APRS mode of the radio itself, then I would have gotten a pop-up on the radio with these messages that were coming in that were directed to me. And I can also access those messages. You may be wondering to yourself, how would you reply to said message on a radio? You would use the microphone and type on these little teeny tiny keypads or turn the little dial-y thing in order to, to get that to work. It's Absolutely. a little tricky to be able to do, but it is possible uh, to be able to pull that off. 
So let me send a message back to Dan. I'll do that once again by coming over here to Dan's uh, pin. I'll just go ahead and click on it and say, send message. And I will send Dan a pizza also. And we will come up here and hit send because all the information is correct. It's got the from, it's got the to, everything's ready to go. I'm gonna listen for a little bit of quiet. There it is. And my message sent, I Dan. Have yeah, and you got it. Perfect. So, so that's pretty cool. That is that is pretty cool how that how that works. Now, in a real MCOM situation, more than likely we would not be using the national APRS frequency because there's notice all of the other traffic that's going on here. And it could be a little cluttered to be able to find that. Now, one one thing you could do is uh, you could say, okay, we want everybody to check in with an update of their of their status. Stand by to to send that status update. I'm going to go ahead and change my status. I'm going to go back up here to tools options. I'm going to change mine to a status level of five and hit enter return. So I'll change my four to a five. I'll hit OK. So I'm ready to beacon. I'm going to zoom back out on the map. And we would, we would put a call out for all operators to be able to, to get ready to send their updates. And I'm gonna go ahead and just go to my map and I'm going to say, uh, clear all stations. And that magically clears the map for me. And then we would call around and just say, okay, KK60A, uh, please uh, transmit your traffic. Chris, I'm having just a little anomaly, the same one that I had yesterday. <clears throat> so okay, I, I we, will, we will move on to the other operators. Dan, NR6V, go ahead and transmit your status. Boom, there he is. He just shows up right there. So that's how you would work through with a voice net if you needed to still use the national frequency. You could go through, clear your map, so that you, you only have the stations that you want to pay attention to. You can be able to find the information pretty quickly uh, and, and narrow that down. Um, if anyone else is here in the Los Angeles area and you have your APRS set up, uh, you can go ahead and send a status report as well. Um, for those, so let's see, what else should we talk about there, David? Well, um, shall we talk about how we would use this without the internet? You started to do that in a closed uh, oh, network. Closed. Yes, uh, thank you. I, I don't have uh, Oliver's visual pulled up, uh, and I don't know whether you have it in queue or not. Uh, DHG had it yesterday. Oh, and, yeah. Let me see if I can find that real quick. All right. It would be on Groups.io. Yeah, I'll find it. So what we frequently do in Aries LAX in our exercises, uh, just about virtually any exercise, we will use this type of pinpoint APRS to show our location and our status. Remember, our primary mission in Los Angeles County is to service hospitals, and we need to know their status continually because we're monitoring their status on behalf of the EMS agency in Los Angeles County. Uh, each hospital, uh, I'm sure this is true in your jurisdiction also, each hospital must continually report their status to the county. Obviously, you don't want to send an ambulance with someone uh, desperately in need to a hospital that can't uh, deal with them. So they're obligated to report uh, uh, several times a day their exact bed count. And that's what we're skilled in doing uh, as backup. So um, we instantly uh, mark uh, in color uh, our hospital status. And if everybody's green, everybody's good. If we're having an exercise and simulating an earthquake, somebody is zero black. That means they are closed. Do not send an ambulance to that location. So those kinds of things work out really, really well. And Chris, if you have that graphic, we could. And, and you, uh, can, we, you can imagine what it would take to do. We serve uh, Aries LAX serves 70 plus hospitals. 
you can imagine what it would take to get status updates by voice for right. 70 hospitals. You'd get no other traffic through. Um, and if you wanted to do it uh, on a continuous basis, it would just be constant. Whereas yeah, Dan, using you know, this, boom. Right. Dan, we've attempted that. As you know, we have a statewide emergency medical exercise uh, each year. It was not held last year uh, or, uh, or this year. Uh, we hope it will be held in 2022 because all of our hospitals are not in an exercise. They're in the real thing, as we all know. But yeah, it's, the, been, a, this, it's been a year long or two year long exercise. Yeah. And the, and the last time we did it, uh, it started, when did check in start? 8 a.m. And, uh, you know, by 40 minutes in, you were backed up by two hours. And that's just impossible. Whereas doing it this way, you see hospital status on this map instantly. There's one green, uh, there's one orange, there are two reds, and the EOC, where we're reporting, is down south, where you see W0DHG. That's, that's the location where all of the hospital status goes to. We do this continually. And then we can send messages this way, although we, we generally go back to WinLink for other messages, but this kind of mapping is really, really significant and, and something that I think is, is quite revolutionary. Now, this map, by the way, everybody is off the grid. This is all entirely RF. So you do more or less have to be within somewhat simplex distance. Although in my case, you see my signal uh, down there, actually it's KN6BKT, Oh, this is uh, this is a, a, f a few Traffic. exercises ago, yeah. um, and um, uh, I could bounce from that location to uh, K6OLI and get to KM6TKJ, uh, and that's the way it works. It, it it would just bounce through until the uh, uh, message is delivered to the destination station. So, so and, uh, and each of these stations can be digipeters. So they can not only participate uh, as the source of information, but they can assist in getting other hospital information where it needs to go. Right. So, David, what frequency do you actually use for this? Do you, you nope. use a you use a simplex frequency, or do you use a repeater, or do you use the national frequency? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, we use a simplex frequency that we have agreed upon in Aries LAX. There are several districts, uh, and ours is Aries LAX Northeast. So we have an agreed upon frequency that has a name Aries 501, um, and we have uh, an agreed upon uh, digital frequency also, uh, which we just uh, nicknamed the Autobahn. Uh, or we pick one that we all commonly know. Uh, so that's the way it's done. It, if you're plopped in a brand new location, you don't know the frequency, uh, that may be a problem. Uh, there is no way to find out. Like in WinLink, you can find the closest gateway. Through APRS, it's a little bit different system. So you would have to know uh, by convention, by habit, what that frequency is going to be in your area. In general, the national frequency, um, and this is across the entire U.S., is 144.390. 144.390 is the is the national APRS frequency. So all that APRS dot phi, that you know the the different websites that you can go to, and and when you're looking at the all of these stations right now, are all transmitting on that that one frequency. If we were to switch over to a simplex frequency um david and dan do you guys want to go over to the um to the autobahn sure we Change can we can try that. that uh we uh we did i would say had pretty good propagation this morning uh for dan's network uh okay. and dan we may be able to uh, try that. Give me just so i'm gonna go ahead and turn i'm gonna reset my map again i'm gonna go up to map and just clear all the stations off I'll wait for them to, to get on. Now, more than likely, um, we, on my screen, will not see anything new come up at all because I'm just too far out of the area and 
Uh, we don't have anybody acting as digipeters in the, the string on this other agreed upon frequency. Um, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll share either David or Dan's screen here in just a minute uh, once they get up and running and hopefully things will uh, show us working. So um, are you guys on the Autobahn now? I am, uh, I, I am 45.030. This, okay. by the way, for the rest of you, is an agreed upon frequency for several uh, uh, gateways in the area. We're going to use it to, uh, to demonstrate digipeating also, which we can do. Should I, uh, Chris, should I take my APRS map off the internet? Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm going to disconnect APRSIS. That's I'm, what he's doing is that right there. And then if you can go up to your map and just go clear station so that you have, you should have a clear map. Yep. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and, and beacon more than likely you guys are not going to hear me, but we'll, we'll send it anyway. Send position beacon. Okay. And I am of course listening in my headset to, to my radio. Um, I'm not hearing anything, but let me go ahead and send that position beacon one more time. Yeah, I've I've tried twice and I'm not uh, finding anything. Okay, to, so to you, can, for me. you can see here in my sound modem that my beacons went out. Uh, W6AH dash four, uh, and I'm sending that beacon out here as a wide one dash one, wide two dash two two beacon. And uh, are either of you guys hearing me at all? No. Okay, I did, did not expect so. So let's do, let's go ahead and, uh, David, go ahead and share your screen so we can all see what your map looks like. And here's the share. Perfect. You're seeing that okay? I am seeing that okay. Okay, very good. Just for the rest of you, here's where I am. Dan is over at this location, and Chris is in this location. Uh, I generally have pretty good communication to Dan, so let's see if I can get to a beacon to Dan. Here we go. Stand by, please. That's good. That's good. That's not good. Now it should work. Okay. Okay. What happened there is that my position beacon was heard by another station. One of them was not Dan's. It was a station I know um, not too far away. And it beaconed back my position so I could see my position. Let's... Uh, Dan, are you able to see his beacon? No. Okay. Oh, you did but, not see it. And and I am not when I when I beacon, um, no one's hearing me. Okay, give it another try now that uh, now that he's finally fully set up on there. Here we go with another beacon. Sound that you heard was the station, which is further to the east. Uh, resending my beacon. So I'm, I'm just not getting west. Um, and Dan, you've tried and you hear nothing? Correct. Okay. Okay. I'm going to do this just to show what happens. We're going to reconnect the internet to this map. And there's a weather station nearby, which pops up. You guys want to do that too, and uh, we'll try to get you back on the map that way. Yeah, I just changed mine over, so let me go ahead and send a position beacon. Okay. I, I didn't copy. What are we doing? Uh, yeah, turn your APRS uh, map back on, and we're going to beacon to put you back on the map and Chris back on the map. Yeah, so if you go back up to tools and uh, connect your APRS.is, Cool. That should start bringing them back up. Chris, you want to give it a shot? I will give it a try. I can't imagine anybody's, you're, you're still going to hear me, but let's find out. Send beacon. 
yeah, mine's not gonna. I I would have to go over to the national freak. Let me go to the over back to the APRS frequency. So Interestingly, I see a station NO1H in La Cañada showed up hmm. on this on uh, APRS. Uh, now I now see KK sixty eight. Oh, there you go. Oh, you did just see it. Yep. <clears throat> well, that was from uh, K six O L I. So that's good. And there you go. I can see you now as well because I've got I have mine set so that mine is connected to APRS.is and I'm on the national frequency. I'm on 144.390. Mm -hmm. So I was able to get my packet out and onto the internet. And because you're connected over to the internet and somebody else is transmitting that over, I see them as well. And there we go. We can see Dan uh, coming in now. Oh, also, Michael is playing along. Oh, Michael yeah. is playing KC6 along. KC6 okay. MEH, Michael. Excellent. Hey, Michael, how are you? So that's kind of a kind of a quick rundown of of APRS and, and how we're using it both in Los Angeles and in Ventura counties. Uh, it looks like David's sending a uh, a pizza message. Can you send pizza, please? <laughs> Do we have? Uh, does anybody here in inside of the Zoom have any have any questions they would like to like to ask or like us to address? Anything else that we've missed, by the way, guys? Were you going to show uh, setting the Digipeter settings? Oh yeah, I guess I could show that too. Okay, let me uh, stop. Stop sharing. sharing. It's interesting. I still am not seeing you, Chris, but uh, I see uh, many others. I sent one ping. I'll send another one. Send position beacon. <clears throat> Thank so you, Michael, for that, uh, that. giving us your status five. So let me un unpin David so it makes my screen a little bit larger again. And spotlight from him. So in order to, to turn your own system into a Digipeter, you come up here to the tools and you come back here to options. This middle section here on the APRS tab, it's pretty straightforward. Initially, my Digipeter alias uh, this is that same wide 1-1 or wide 1-1, 2-1. So if I set it to 1-1, then I would digipede any signals coming in that were just a 1-1 designation. So if, if we're in a local area and we need to just get that signal out a little bit further, we don't need to go uh, too far. I could go ahead and set mine as a digipeter and leave it set to wide 1-1. Or if I come down here, if I want to get that signal out a little bit further, uh, maybe we've got a disaster in the area and we've got a couple of hops we need to make a link to. We can plug that in. That will expand that, uh, that range out. You can also change this. You can just type in here. So let's say I, I wanted to become a 2-2. Um, I would just have to make sure I've got the right keyboard selected and I can change that. Now my station would respond as a 2-2 to, to put that push that signal out. So I'm going to go ahead and leave mine set to a 2-1 and we'll say okay. Now my station as it as it hears packets should go ahead and start um, implementing that as need be. But while it's doing that, let's come back up here to tools. I'm going to come back down here to options. And I want to look at a couple of the other options that are that are in here in APRS uh, in pinpoint. So TNC settings, by the way, um, if you go to, I should have said this earlier, if you go to wave talkers and you go back to where we're going to, we're going to add a whole resources page for just APRS. So if you just go to the main page, you go to a, go to the resources tab right now, I've got the wind link link. I'm going to add one for APRS so that you'll be able to see all of just the APRS data uh, in here, but but the document is also listed in the WinLink page. So if you go to the WinLink page, there is, um, scroll down, there's an APRS button down here at the bottom. You can spring that open. And here is a quick setup guide for APRS by K6OLI. There's also links to pinpoint APRS, uh, the quick setup guide for sound modem. If you do not already have your sound modem set up, 
that's here. And then here's a link to the UZ7HO sound modem download. Now, if you click this PDF, what it's going to do is it's going to open up this uh, quick guide that was put together by K6OLI. He's the emergency coordinator for LAX Northeast District. And it's a really good guide. It kind of walks you through everything you need to do to get your station set up. So you download the APRS, uh, download pinpoint, download sound modem, where you need to install those. Here's all of the how you set up all of the settings on the APRS tab. Come down a little bit further. There's all of the settings you need to set up for your TNC. For the most part, you're going to set up your TNC if you're using the setup that we're showing with the uh, sound modem uh, or the uh, sound modem and with, um, I don't know why I always forget the name of the thing. Um, uh, Vara? Signal link. No, the signal link. Signal link. So you, you set your TNC <laughs> type to be network kiss mode. You would come down here. You don't need to worry about the COM port because it's going out over USB. You set your data bits, stop bits. Many of these settings are all uh, as they are in the defaults, but here they are replicated for you. You make sure that your network KISS TNC settings, make sure that the TCP IP port is set to 127.0.0.1. That is the IP address of your own computer. That means just loop back to myself. Then double check the port number because this is one of the places I think that got me initially. The port needs to be set to 8100 or 8100. And if we go over to sound modem, let me just bring up sound modem real quick. And we go up here to settings and we go to our, I think it's under devices. Yeah, it's under devices. The KISS server port notice is set to 8100 and that is enabled. This is the link that you're making right here. You're making this link between sound modem listening for the KISS server port on 8100 and you're setting your pinpoint APRS to talk uh, and exchange data on port 8100. So those two have to match there. And the same thing is what's happening in WinLink. The, the server ports have to match make all that. Setting the position on your screen. Um, if you don't have a GPS plugged in, uh, it is hold the shift key down and then left click in order to add your, your pin and that'll add your GPS coordinates for you if you, if you need to. Um, then there's another section in here for connecting TNC to beacon your position. It just walks through what we were just showing you uh, here in the, in the document. There's also a little short note about sending messages via APRS in here as well. So very helpful little guide. And if you scroll down a little bit further, here's the UZ7HO sound modem. So everything is all kind of wrapped into, into one guide for you. You can go ahead and access that right on wavetalkers.com to be able to, to get that information. Um, let's come in here and look at a couple of these other tabs real quick while we're here. GPS, um, use the GPS coming in from the TNC as a pass through. Um, if you have an external GPS plugged in, I don't have mine currently plugged in. Um, that's where you would set up those settings in here. Um, process all GPS as NMEA sentences. Um, that's going to be there. Let's come over here to the map. Inside of the map, uh, a couple of things to note down here in the map provider. You can click this little map provider here and you can select which map you want to use. I think this defaults to a Bing map perhaps, um, but you can choose any of the other maps. I have mine set to the Google map, um, but you can choose any of those that you would like to use. And you can set some of the parameters for how you would like to set up tracks or, or display various dif different bits of information. Um, APRS-IS, -IS. ah, this is why you weren't hearing mine because I did not have my enable RF to IS gate when it's connected to the APRS-IS. -IS. So if you have this gate set up, your system is working as a gateway then where it's bridging what it's hearing from the RF side and is bridging that out to the internet side as well. And so there's some other setting information there. And then over here under miscellaneous, this top section here, this is how David was able to automatically respond back to me and let me know that he had received the packets from me. What you want to do is you want to click the tick the box here for auto answer APR message. 
initially it's set for wind driving. So if you're driving along, it's tracking where, how fast it's going to beacon based on the speed that you're traveling. That is set over here in the APRS tab. We'll go back here to the APRS tab real quick. You can see that this is beacon my course and speed. And you can see right here, it's set to if I'm driving 65 miles an hour, um, or if I'm up to 65 miles an hour, uh, it will go ahead and beacon that uh, speed out. Or you can also have it beacon automatically if your direction changes and you can set this. So if you're hiking along or driving along, you make a turn, it'll send out a new beacon. Pretty helpful stuff. Um, but you can set this to auto answer. Um, I've changed mine to auto always. And then I've put the little ACK dash or day W6AH, that way, if I receive in a packet, um, especially if I'm working on the national frequency uh, or working in an MCOM where we don't really know if the data is going back and forth, I'll go ahead and set that as an acknowledgement, send that data back out. And that's some of the other information that's in here. So I'll say, okay, back up, zoom out a little bit on the map and we can see it. Um, cool. Cool. What else do we miss? I think that's an excellent beginning overview of APRS, <clears throat> and it shows you some of the tactical functions that you can use with exercises in the field. Uh, not everybody's going to have this much APRS traffic in their area. It is highly used in Los Angeles. What we're not seeing are all of the ships in Long Beach uh, that use APRS. If, if you let it populate during the day, Chris, as you know, you just see dozens and many of them have been stuck there for some time. Hopefully they're unloading their goods now, it's freeing up a little bit. Um, we could go to the Winlink map for oh, check. Oh yeah, let's let's look and see how okay. that is how that is going. Let me move myself back down in here and see. Uh, we'll give folks a, another minute here to to go ahead and and send in your check in. Yep, I've got several. You've got several, so, so I'll open up my I WinLink think... here. Another copy of WinLink is already running. Of course it is. I will click down here and let's, I'm gonna check in via Telnet so I don't uh, disturb the traffic that's going on. Let's go ahead and start that. You're gonna have about Look 30. That. About 30 is coming in. Perfect, download the checked messages. This is a preference, by the way. I think we've mentioned it, but if that screen looks unusual to you, you've never seen it. This is a preference that you can set inside WinLink so that it does not automatically download every single message as soon as it's ready to download it. It gives you the option of downloading it or not. Now, why would you use that? Well, if you're in a genuine priority or emergency situation, you may not want some crazy person like me asking for pizza uh, where you have a critical life and death message uh, uh, coming through. So it, it allows you some discretion. In this case, we want all of the check-ins. So there they are. So there we go. So let me, uh, let me remove some spotlights here so folks can clearly see my screen. Remove spotlights. And let's come back up here to messages. Again, we showed this last week. We'll come up to message and we're gonna come down to this generate maps and CSV files from forms. And I'm gonna click the little drop down here. Express check-in. You want WinLink check-in. I want WinLink check-in this Rem time. There we yeah, go, 17 I've got. Yeah. Okay. And I will display the map. And there we go. We've Voila. got uh, folks coming in from Hawaii. And you, you. KH6UU, uh -huh. we've got, uh, I'm not always not thrilled with how it display, where it chooses to display. By the way, if you right click and drag on the map, you can pan the map around like this. Let's see who else is here. We've got uh, uh, WH6EAO. Thank you for joining us again. We've got down here in Texas, KI5PLJ. Who near Houston? KT5EM, <clears throat> we've got KD8OCW, hello, KD8VJD, hello in Utah, KJ7DOD, KN6QIR, we've got several up in Northern California, let me zoom in a little tighter on there, 
And Tanya has asked a question in chat, and it's it's such an appropriate question. What's the difference between WinLink check-in and Express check-in? Well, it's how they were labeled. And um, uh, the, the gentleman who is genuinely a wizard at writing all of these forms has changed it to make it consistent. So I think Express check-in has gone away, and it's just WinLink check-in, which is what the express check-in was before. Same form, it just had a different name for a while. And I, I think they have corrected that now. So that's fantastic. We got people literally all over the place again. Yeah. Excellent. That's awesome. So thank thank everyone. Thanks everyone for, for joining. Um, if you have, have not found it, the Wave Talker site is... Uh, up and running, ready to go. Um, a big thank you to everybody who bought us a coffee. Um, there's a link right here to be able to, to do that. It appears on, on all the pages. It really helps us keep the site and all of this infrastructure up to be able to, um, to, do, these, to do these sessions and keep everything up and running. We will be adding in the resources section, we will be adding an APRS section in here where we'll plug all this information in um, all of there. So I see somebody sending a late check-in. I'll go ahead and re let's recheck the map and we'll show you that process also. Now, here's a fun thing. If you've got the map open, notice I can't close. I can't do anything with this window. So let me come back down here, click on my RMS Express, bring the map back up. I'm going to close the map that gives me access to this window. I can close that window. Uh, that's my sound mode only open a new Telnet session, start. So we got a few more people. Yep, there's a few more people checking oh my gosh. in. Yeah, Look at that South Down Carolina, Jacksonville, messages. perfect. Our Eastern Eastern time zone people. There we go. Let me go back to message now. And if the demo gods are with me when I generate the map again, I got to change the drop down here to the <laughs> WinLink check in. I don't know if Greg needs to change that too, or whether that's just remembering it. There we go. Yeah, great. Bring that out. Boom. There we go. Coming in from Jacksonville, Florida, South huh? Carolina. Perfect. Excellent. So thanks everyone for for that. Um, with that, I think what we'll do is we'll wrap up the live streams uh, on the different streaming platforms. Anyone who wants to to hang around and and ask some questions in the in the chat. Uh, we will go ahead and do that for a while for the after party. And I will say that we're, we're going to take probably next week off. We'll get started again after January. Um, what we'll do is we'll send out uh, a new email to everyone who signed up. If you're interested in uh, joining on uh, to, to the chats or onto, the, onto our sessions here in, in the Zoom, send us an email to winlink at wavetalkers. Dot com. That's winlink at wavetalkers.com. Uh, or you can use the feedback form on wavetalkers and we'll, we'll, uh, uh, we'll send out a note to be able to add you in to the Zoom call where you have access to, uh, to us in the after party. Uh, otherwise, all of these are all posted live on Facebook and on wavetalkers and our um, Facebook group and on my LinkedIn live. So you can just like link, follow, all of those kinds of things um, and get notified when those uh, go live if you want to watch them on the live stream. And Chris, we have to thank you and give you huge high fives for aggregating all of this on Wave Talkers. No one has ever done it this way or this well. And uh, it's, it's just a huge resource that's going to stay up. So everyone, if you have friends that want to go through some of the short videos or the full sessions, Please recommend them and you know how to find us. And so we're here to answer your questions, but it is sort of a self-contained module now in which you can learn this from, well, how did we start in the first session? If you can do email, you can do WinLink and that's all you sort of need to know. And we'll take it from there. So thank you, Chris. Thank you. A thank plus. You. If you, if you have any suggestions for, for other topics for us to cover, um, you can use the feedback form on, on Wave Talker, send us a note, um, and we can try and cover some other topics there. Or you've got all of our call signs, uh, you can reach us via WinLink also at our call sign. Mine is W6AH. 
David is KK6DA, Dan is NR6V, and David, who's been a little quiet today because he had to uh, had some some other things to be able to to run around and take care of. He is W0DHG. And these are also going to start showing up on Ham Radio Now, which is uh, David W0DHG is the host of Ham Radio Now as well. So with that, let me go ahead and turn off the live streams on those different platforms, and then we'll just move into the after party. So thanks a lot, everybody who's watching us on Facebook Live. And no after party for you. Thanks thanks a lot for, for watching on Wave Talker or on um, 